So we're here at John's house again tonight. This time we have our pile of topsoil. We're gonna to distribute that all over the area that you saw in the earlier video, where we had that plastic and we put in that tile. So stay tuned. That's 13 cubic yards. So this looks like pulverized brown topsoil. Yep. We just want to try to make sure that that tile is headed downhill pretty well. Right. So I see yeah. you might stand on it right there. Now. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask you, you're just going to bury the brick or whatever? Everything. Everything. Yeah, I'm going to have it hold it down there, hold it back so nothing gets back there. As your husband said, once it's done, leave it alone. And if you put enough dirt in there, nobody will ever know. Yeah. And they'll actually pick it up and go, wait a minute, there's a tarp under here. And they left a whole bunch of bricks. <laughs> When it has rained like crazy, this actually, the setup has worked perfectly. It's just when either that's fallen off or up, that up there is clogged up and it just sheets off and you just see it coming off. So that's a bathroom window. And this looks like a wall of water. So when the system was working right, it worked perfectly. That's, that's not, good. that's bad. Yeah, but you said you put gutter protection up well, yeah, there. Yeah, and that and was the first thing I did. Yeah. Of course, I had everybody in the neighborhood, it's like, get off the top of your roof. Because I had a long ladder extended up there and I'm screwing it. I'm like, you're going to fall off. often guys get to play in dirt on purpose. Right. <laughs> this is fantastic. I know it's a lot quicker than a wheelbarrow full at a time. She asked me, she says, how many wheelbarrows do you think that is? I said, it's like a hundred or more. Oh yeah. And my back would have been dead. Yeah. This is the best thing since sliced bread. I like to refer to this job as being a power wheelbarrow. There's a lot of different roles Johnny can fulfill and this one really saves a lot of work really isn't that difficult. It's not that stressful for Johnny or anything, but it sure does save a lot of work for me or for the client or whoever needs it. So in this case, we've had the soil delivered and dumped in the driveway in the front yard, but it's actually needed in the backyard. That's a pretty standard situation. Now in this one, it's not real handy because this curb is pretty steep. So it's a little bit of an air tub because of this curb, but oh my goodness, so much easier and better than a wheelbarrow. I end up using high range to go to and from the destination, but I have to shift into low range to actually fill up the bucket. We've been several trips already and still haven't destroyed his grass. Now we'll be pretty rough on his grass as many trips as we're making this time. without the camera for just a minute. What does she do? I found a rake. Yep. She picks up some sort of an implement. Yep. I'm not powered like Johnny, though. But I kind of felt guilty that John's over here working and I wasn't really doing much. It's easy with the tractor bringing oh, it around. Yeah. There's not a lot to do. Well, can you imagine a wheelbarrow full would have been like that little bit right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So I'm gonna get more rocks oh, and just lay them across there. here and actually build up kind of a full reel on bed. Tim's hauled around quite a few bucketfuls already and there's still a huge pile of dirt here. Here comes Speedy Gonzalez tonight. Oh yeah? Usually you call me Slowpoke Rodriguez. Yes, but today you've been rather speedy, so. So Tim, I don't see any snow. It's pretty warm, isn't it? No one knew that they would work on leaves. 
So we tried it. And now several folks have bought them and said, I'm going to try them on my leaves. I'd be interested in hearing from you that have actually, anybody that's actually used them on your leaves to see if they work. But if you haven't seen these, if you missed the other video, they're called edge tamers. We put them on here and snug them down. And what their objective is, is to keep the cutting edge from cutting into the grass or the driveway or whatever else you're plowing snow on. Well, as we got to talking about it, we decided that maybe we'd work on some other things too. So this evening we've noticed that I'm gouging a little bit on John's driveway. So I thought maybe we would uh, put these on and see if it actually worked. Okay. Who knows? They really help to keep you from gouging into the sidewalk or the asphalt or whatever you're working on. They don't allow the bucket to get right down on the ground, and so that keeps it from scuffing it as bad. But that also keeps you from cleaning quite as well when you're trying to clean it off. And we can brush that up with a broom in a little bit. Yeah, the only thing would be as if the tire tracks and all on that dirt make it so it's hard to get up. Yeah. So we'll kind of see how that, that goes as an experiment. But when we use it out in the grass, my goodness, there'd be no other way to, to pick up the dirt in the grass. Right, yeah, it'd be great for mulch as well. Yeah, so overall, I think I think this is a success. Four foot, say goodbye. Please say goodbye, I thought you stopped it. Oh, God, it's so I'd be surprised if it makes it. It may. I don't care. Yeah. I'm more concerned about my house than a plant. Yeah. That's not very PC. Plant, plant caring. <laughs> uh, but very good. <laughs> Man, this is gonna be so much better. Now that I have extra dirt, I have places to put it. Yeah. So right here, there used to be two gigantic ash trees that went way up, and we had all that ash borer stuff. We had six of them, and they used to have a tree house that was here, like about here to here when we moved in. Uh, that was not okay by the, uh, the homeowners association, so uh, they were told to take it down and never did. So when we moved in, that thing was condemned. So eventually I had to take those trees down, but nothing back there now except for thatch, thorns, and thistle. And poison ivy. And Ooh. poison ivy. So if you can cover that up, that would be fantastic. There you go. That's good. Yeah, that's good. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of good video of John working hard <laughs> and Tim just riding a tractor. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so here's the final analysis on the idea of picking up soil on top of a surface like this. If your surface is good and solid, and if you or your customer is not crazily concerned about the surface, in other words, if a little scratch happens on it, no big deal. Now, I'm not talking about a gouge, I'm talking about a, a, just a scratch. The very easiest and best way to do this is use the bucket without edge tamers, without anything. If the surface is level, you can pick it up a lot better than what we're doing here with the edge tamers. Now, if the surface is less than perfect, like this surface here, you know, here's, a, here's an area where a root has pushed that up a lot. Well, you need something to keep from gouging all that out. So in the situation where your surface is, is poor, uh, like this surface is not very good, it's an old asphalt driveway, then these edge tamers are really helping a lot. It would be really hard to clean this up without, without tearing up this asphalt, without these edge tamers. We're getting down there now. Everybody's seen, you know, Christy and me's hobby, or at least my hobby that Christy kind of follows along with, right? Sure. And you wearing a Superman shirt makes me think you might have your own hobby. Tell me what's going on. Okay, so some men have a man cave. I have a nerd office. If you come in, you'll see what my hobby is. It's pretty much anything nerd and geek involved, which includes comic books, Star Trek, Doctor Who, everything in here. So, Harry Potter. And, and a little bit of Harry Potter and a little bit of uh, Lord of the Rings. 
a lot of this is signed. This is actually screen used. It's actually used on a, an episode of Star Trek. So this is actually Star Trek Enterprise. This, actually, this is filmed in the uh, early 2000s. This is actually from one of the movies. Yes. Uh, it's one I, from Star Trek, one. Star Trek 16 Undiscovered Cover. It's a Vulcan ambassador, and this is his hat, so I just put it there. Uh, and then I got this patch. This is actually part of the uniform. So, there's, oh, and then the comic books. And this is actually probably my favorite comic book. So this is uh, Amazing Spider-Man 33. Uh, it's a Steve uh, Ditko cover. But the awesome thing, it's signed by Stan Lee. And I actually took it and had him sign it, and then they, this is called slabbing the comic book. So it's graded and everything else. I can't take it out again, but uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So what's that worth? Uh, I would say those are probably around three to hundred dollars now. I bought it for about one hundred and fifty, and he signed it, and it's about three hundred dollars now. So it's because uh, it's also certified. But I have some other comic books on here that are pro are signed as well. This is uh, Stanley. It's not certified or anything because it just costs a lot of money. But so this is Greg Capullo. George Perez did these. Uh, this is actually a famous cover, and that's actually a very famous cover over there with Superman carrying uh, Supergirl. Um, and this is an old that's an old nineteen fifties comic book, uh, Agents of Shield. It's the uh, one of the first issues of uh, 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 Nick Fury. And then I have way more comic books than that. So this is this is uh, 15 long boxes and about three half boxes or short boxes. Uh, there's about 250 comic books per box. So that's around 3,500, 3,700 comic books that I have. So I love this. So how did you get into comic books? So uh, a long story is, is the fact that I, as a little kid, had a hard time reading. And I found that comic books helped me read. And I actually then started drawing the images that were in the comic books. And that actually helped me through school. And I actually had teachers that leveraged that as well. So it was always been a lifetime passion. I love it. So, wow. And it's, they're all like little piece of artwork. I mean, look at, I mean, look at that. That looks like a little mini painting there. Uh, your, I don't know if your viewers will know, but this is the very first uh, Deadpool. Deadpool came out as a movie uh, last year. And it's going to come out in new movies. I love it. Like, cool stuff. Yeah. So you're still buying comic books today. Oh, yeah. You didn't see my little rack that I haven't read yet. I in saw there. the rack, but I, so so that's, those are new ones. Those are new ones that I haven't read yet, and I tend to read. So I read all of them, and I put them in a sleeve, and I catalog them, and I put them in here. John, this is great. This is really good stuff. I appreciate you showing us around. Sure. You bet you. Thank you so much for the help. You guys have been fantastic. My house is very thankful. I'm very thankful. My wife is very thankful. My family is thankful. Awesome. That's good. Really good that's really special. Yeah. Book of Horns. <laughs> <laughs> have to have to. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.